Well, was this eruption predicted? Well, you tell me, could it have been predicted? Here are the seismic records for the period of several months, uh, most of a year beforehand. Yeah, indeed, the same type of pattern we're, we're used to seeing uh, occurred in this case. Uh, and the problem was that it wasn't predicted that it was going to generate the amount of ash that it did, nor the winds were going to carry them where they were. And indeed, a part of volcano eruption prediction that we sort of talk about amongst ourselves but never really can get a grasp on, even though it would be very useful, is not necessarily predicting when they're going to erupt, but when they're going to stop erupting. And that would be very useful to do now. And I, quite frankly, I don't think we have any handle on it at all. Okay, well, enough of volcanoes, let's jump to, to, to earthquakes. I'm going to take you through various different uh, situations over the past several decades in which earthquake prediction has been attempted or been supposedly successful or maybe not quite, or what, to give you sort of a flavor of what we're dealing with in this case. I'm going to jump around to start off with repeatable events, this thing I talked about earlier, talk about the precursory patterns, various different ways that we might do a little better than just looking at precursory patterns, and end up with something called episodic tremor and slip, which may not have anything to do with earthquake prediction, but it's a new phenomenon that we really don't understand, and so it, it may. Now, to do this, I'm going to have to jump around the, the world in a number of different spots. Uh, I hope this doesn't make us too dizzy in doing so. Uh, first of all, we'll, we'll descend south to California and look at uh, an area along the San Andreas Fault, uh, a, a town, a little village called Parkfield, which has become sort of famous. It considers itself the earthquake capital of the world. And indeed, they've had a number of earthquakes. It lies along the San Andreas between areas where the big ones do occur. The really large magnitude sort of eight types of earthquakes take place. But only sort of magnitude six or so earthquakes typically occur here. Well, a number of years ago, it was recognized that the seismograms for several of these earthquakes, at least two of them, recorded at the same stations, looked to be the same. In other words, these were repeating earthquakes, repeating magnitude six earthquakes. That, uh, and we, we think we understand enough of the physics of what earthquakes are. Stress builds up on a fault. There's a weakness, and a fault is just a weakness in the earth. And finally, it exceeds the strength, and it slips. Well, then stress builds up again, and then it slips again. So the same place can rupture over and over again over time. And this is what probably is going on at Parkfield. So this, this stress buildup and release, if you can sort of plot it up in a way that looks like this, over time it slowly builds up, and it's doing so by the ground around it straining, moving laterally, and then suddenly it exceeds its strength and slips. You get an earthquake. And this seemed to be a fairly regular pattern. They were occurring about 22 uh, years apart. Well, in the mid-80s, it was realized, well, if they're this regular, maybe we can predict the next earthquake. If it's building up in the same way, then let's sort of set a window. We'll say the size is around a magnitude 6. The place will be park field, and this window of time is going to be say 1988 or so, at least before 1994. And so a lot of experiments were set up there to catch this predicted earthquake. Another way to look at it is just the number plotted against the time. If it's very regular, all of these should fall on a straight line. And they mostly do. There's one that's a little bit off, but most of them are there. Using this, you can say then, well, when will the next one occur? Well, 1988, that's when it's predicted. Well, 1988 came and went, and 1994 came and went. And everybody, whoa, what's happening? Finally, in 2004, the earthquake did occur. And it was roughly the same as what was expected, around magnitude 6. Slightly different in some of its details, but about the same. 38 years this time, so half again wrong from, from the predicted time. Well, let's jump to a whole different time scale and look at repeating events on a very quick time scale. This I mentioned at Mount St. Helens. We saw uh, just a few years ago 
that these things were occurring so, so uh, rapidly and predictably, in a sense, that actually Seth coined the term drumbeat earthquakes. Boom, boom, boom. And these are just a record here of several days of that. And if we zoom in close to the source of these in the crater with the station that's right there, and, uh, and, and we're, what we're going to do now is listen to them. Now this sound is speeded up 50 times over real time. So these things are occurring. Well, they're not exactly regular, are they? Drum beats, it's not a marching band. It's more like a jazz band. Right? Okay. Well, it turns out that there were, in this period of time, there were about two per minute. And they varied, though, about plus or minus 15 seconds. So, again, some variation. Well, so much for regular repeating earthquakes. Let's look for precursory types of events. And a, sort of a classic case was several years ago, in fact, at the SSA meeting that took place in, in Palm Springs back in 2004, uh, a prediction was made by a group from UCLA that looks at earthquake patterns. Kalos Borak and his colleagues uh, had been evidently successful in two previous predictions, one in Japan and one in Central California, had narrowed down a time and a zone and a rough size, and those had came, uh, came to pass, more or less within those, those zones. So maybe he's onto something. Well, the pattern recognition technique that he was using w was called the RTP uh, algorithm at that time. Subsequently, it's been renamed the, the M8 algorithm. And not very many people understand all the subtleties of it. But basically, it is a pattern recognition technique of looking at a sequence of earthquakes. I'm not going to go to the details of this slide. It's just to remind me that it's this pattern. In one area, earthquakes occur apparently randomly. Well, their algorithm could put together that it wasn't totally random, and indeed it was trying to lead to something else. And they had been apparently successful. Well, they issued the, the, uh, the, the prediction in the, the sort of the winter-spring of that year, and it was for an area that's actually east of the populated parts of Southern California, so not a lot of serious consequences for this, uh, but a pretty large area and a, a moderate time window, and it was claimed to be within the next some months, and the time window closed for that in September, and there had been no earthquake. So this was a failure, and this was a you know, deterministic type of prediction, not a, a percent chance. So you can, with this type of prediction, you can either succeed or you can fail, and when you fail, you call that a false alarm. Well, in fact, no earthquakes occurred there yet. Well, is that true? There was one just a couple of weeks ago in this area. Well, it wasn't exactly in this area, and that's another thing about prediction. If you're going to say the time window and the space, you really have to, be, you have to stick with that. And closeness, well, it sort of counts, but, but, but not really. And the one a couple of weeks ago, it was just south of the U.S.-Mexican border, so really isn't even within this area. Well, since then, this, this group, and they're uh, uh, based at now, their computational stuff is in Moscow uh, with the National uh, Academy of Sciences, the Russian Academy of Sciences, and they put out a map that looks like this, that they, where they say over some period of time, the chance of a, of a large earthquake exceeding magnitude 8 is heightened. And you'll notice over in South America, there's an area around Chile. Well, their window of time for that was between 2005 and 2012. Well, we all know that an 8.8 .8 took place there just a couple of months ago. So, was this a successful prediction? Well, it sort of was in, in that sense. It wasn't exactly right. It did fall within their, their, their zone, the yellow one here. But the center of where they would say it would start was the red part here, and it wasn't exactly right, but not bad. But they've got dozens of other places whose windows open and close and change, and earthquakes don't occur. 